Hi, I'm Karima Brown. It's Sunday and it's time for The Fix. Welcome to this edition of The Fix, where every Sunday we hold decision makers to account. We tell you why it matters, how it affects you and why you should care. Now, at the heart of the National Prosecuting Authority's ability to restore public trust is accountability. Hollowed out during the state capture years, the institution is now trying to claw back its reputation as the upholder of the law and justice. And to ensure that high-profile crooks get their comeuppance, President Cyril Ramaphosa has created a specialized and dedicated investigative directorate. Funds have been set aside to take down criminals and to rebuild the institution from the ground up. Top legal brains have been put at the disposal of the NPA to bring an end to the culture of impunity. To tell us how far she's come and what still lies ahead, I'm joined in the special sit-down with the National Director of Public Prosecutions, Shamila Batoy. There is a strong public pleasure that those who are implicated in state capture should face justice. And it would, because it would send a strong message, a strong signal that the era of impunity is over. And that will also build and rebuild also a public confidence in the country and help to restore trust in our law enforcement institutions. Thank you so very much. That is, of course, the president expressing the sentiment of the nation, Ms. Patoy, about the urgency of bringing that culture of impunity to an end. Now, he has created the Special Investigative Directorate, and they have, of course, um, prioritized certain cases. Let's go straight to those, um, you know, in, uh, uh, investigative directorate. What exactly... Uh, is the cases that have been lined up so far and what is the progress uh, uh, you know in far insofar as those are concerned Karima, good morning and good morning to your listeners uh, firstly let me say it's great to be here on international women's day and um, you know i'd i'd also um, like to just um, mention that you know you talked about accountability that was what you said and being here is being accountable to the people of south africa so I'm pleased to be here. Um, the investigating directorate, as you know, the president proclaimed this uh, in May last year, the creation of the investigative directorate. It's not even one year mm. since that proclamation. And um, I think it was in April, and advocate Cronier came on board in around May. And so, you know, since then, um, a lot of work, I'll deal with the cases that you talked about. Well, to a certain extent, because mm. I certainly, there are things that I can say and things that I can't say. But, um, you know, since then, there has been a lot of work that's gone into setting up the directorate. Yeah. And I think that's what is important um, to explain, and that is, it's not like the day that Advocate Cronier walked, walked into the NPA, there were cases lined up, and she was, she was ready to go with it. Yeah. So getting the capacity into the directorate has, been, has taken up a lot of her time, and, uh, and it has been really, very challenging. But so can... let's, let's look at what the main cases are that have been prepared. We've seen um, she's got Estina Derry, she's got the Busasa group. Uh, these are cases that has, of course, been uh, on the public agenda. On Estina, you got a hiding because you rushed in the first instance. Uh, it's back on the agenda. Give us an update on the Estina Derry case. Where are we at? When can we expect people to be in court? So you mean you, you talk about the NPA, because yes. I wasn't here at the time, yes. personally. But yes, certainly, I think that was, that was a bad decision to proceed at that time. Um, it's, it, with, you know, we, we have, as the public is aware, we have been um, to the UAE recently, and it was publicly made known at that time that one of the reasons why the charges were withdrawn was because of the fact that we had not received the evidence from the UAE. Mm. Um, what we found out is that the NPA had, um, you know, we hadn't really got our ducks in a row at the time mm. in terms of making sure that the MLA, MLAs are very mutual legal assistance requests are very mm. technical things. And between countries, you have to make sure you get it right. So we didn't quite have all our ducks in a row. Do you but have them in have a row now? Yes, absolutely. We visited the UAE. We met, we went to the UNCAC, that's the uh, UN Convention Against Corruption. Um, that was the uh, Convention of State Parties meeting uh, in December, 
where we took the opportunity, Advocate Cronier and I, um, to meet with the UAAE delegation. Um, they made it clear to us at that point that you know, there were certain very small technicalities that needed to be addressed. We fixed all of that and we've sent a fresh, well, a, a, a request that met with all the requirements. Mm. Um, since then, it's, it's, we've been waiting to get, it's over two and a half months now. And what is and the cause for the delay? That's a very good question because we do not know. And so our minister just met with the UAE ambassador on Friday, um, la two days ago, and basically to uh, you know, address this issue, mm. to try to understand what the delay is. So let's, let's just take the public into our confidence because not everyone is au fait with all the details. So the Estina Dairy case involves, of course, uh, monies uh, that were used and, of course, you need uh, people in other countries to cooperate. So what exactly is it that you're requiring from the UAE to make your indictment um, strong enough so that you have a winnable case uh, to take those that need to account to court? I think, you know, I do want to take the public into confidence. That is why I'm here. Um, but there are certain things that if I disclose exactly what evidence we mm. want, I don't want at the end of the day when, when people are brought to court for them to say that they were tried in the media. Mm. And so I'm going to say that we need important evidence regarding money flows. Yes. Because, you know, um, I think that's, that's quite evident. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. So if um, one can understand the desire of the prosecution's team to not a give away strategy, to not be open to the allegation or the accusation that you are being tried to the media or that the trial is unfair, if you are to say to South Africans who say, uh, but Ms. Batoy, you've had so much time um, and a lot of this evidence is in the public domain, why must they have patience with you? Why must they uh, let you um, proceed at the pace that you are proceeding? Sure. Um, a lot of the evidence being in the public domain does not mean that it is legally admissible in court. Mm. And that is a very, very important issue. The fact that something may be reported on, we have to make sure we get it in a way that makes it legally admissible mm. in court. And that is exactly what we're trying to do now. And if we don't follow these steps, we will not be able to admit this evidence in court. And then we will have to look at the next best evidence that we have um, in order to show, uh, in order to prove what we're trying to prove. Yeah. So now, now one of the things that is interesting for me um, about, you know, evidence and the fact that cases are ready is the case that involves um, a unit that operated in the northwest from the South African Police Services. Now, as we know, the NPA is one cog in a chain. Uh, you have the Hawks, you have the South African Police, uh, etc. And as a consequence of that, we've obviously had institutions that have been corrupted. Now, this unit um, has, in fact... Um, been charged. My understanding is that it uh, involves um, a former very senior police officer in the Northwest um, by the name of uh, Mr. Mabula. Um, he has been, um, you know, a decision has been taken 18 months ago to prosecute him. It's been taken by the investigative directorate by um, Advocate Cronier. It took four months. She added charges. She's approved and signed the indictment that is in February, that is just last month. My understanding it is now with the NDPP in uh, Gauteng. Why is the no, NDPP, or rather DPPP, but why is that case now not going to court, given the fact that an, a decision has been taken um, that the, uh, court, the, the case must proceed? My understanding is that she approved and signed the indictment in February. Unfortunately, I don't have details of that case. I'm aware of the case. I know that you know, the steps you mentioned have been taken. Yes. But why exactly at this point... It has not moved forward. I, I, I really don't know. So now, to, to give the public a chance to understand why I'm choosing this mm -hmm. case is because the politicization of uh, our criminal justice system was key to the state capture project under Jacob Zuma. And the Democratic Alliance had asked for this um, police officer to be suspended because essentially what they said was that he was using the police to go around dealing with people um, on a political basis. And 
And the people that comes to mind here include the former head of the Hawks, General Johan Boysen. It includes IPED. It includes Gerinal. It includes Glynis Breitenbach. This is a unit that specifically was used by politicians to deal with their opponents. Now, you have to restore accountability. Mm -hmm. You have to restore trust. How is it that Advocate Kroenier takes a decision that this indictment must happen and it gets stuck in Gauteng? What I should say is I don't know if that is factually correct, because if Advocate Cronier took a decision, then that matter is before the invest with the investigating directorate, and therefore the investigating directorate will be dealing with it. Yeah. So that is why I'm not sure that those facts are entirely correct. Mm. Um, but what I should say is that in the directorate, Advocate Cronier has declared one stream of investigation invol involving law enforcement in general, yeah. including the NPA. Mm. And so there are a number of cases that are in that space that we are looking at in terms of what role did law enforcement play in order to further the objectives of, of those that wanted to capture the state. Okay. And so that is why I say it's within the directorate space. It will be Advocate Cronier's team that will be dealing with mm. it. And at this point, I'm not sure what the delay for it is, but, you know, I can certainly look into that. And look, it is because something she's that very keen. To, she's very keen, as you can understand. Advocate Cronier is extremely uh, aware of the pressure and, and the, the, the need to demonstrate to the country that things are moving in mm. the right direction. So and of course the best way to demonstrate it isn't through words, it's through action. Absolutely. You yourself have yes. said you don't want to have many press conferences, you want to demonstrate things. Yes. So um, the reason why that for me was an important uh, question to ask is because of the fact that she not only um, said that the matter is ready to go to court, she added additional charges. So it's now getting stuck in Gauteng. And of course, one needs to ask, so what is the relationship perhaps between uh, the prosecuting boss in this province and the police officer implicated? And what I want to know as a national director, are you aware of resistance to efforts to actually clean up the organization and to bring to book those who used state institutions to go after political opponents and act on the instructions of politicians rather than on the basis of having cases in law. I think that just what is, what is uh, important is that the fact that this case is now being dealt with means that things are changing. So I think that's the first thing. The second thing is I again want to reiterate, we need to clarify the facts, because I'm not sure whether it is before the DPP in South Gauteng. My understanding is it, it, it is, and that she has signed off on it, um, and there's now a delay. She was ready to go to court in February. Hermione Cronier is a person, he's a fighter, and I know if there was unreasonable delay in this matter, she would be onto it. Okay. And so, but just generally answering your question, um, look, I have taken a decision to overturn two cases, yes. uh, very public cases, yes. um, and um, one of them, the latter one, the one involving um, SARS, SARS uh, colleagues, um, I am being taken on review, uh, a political party is, is, is requiring of me to review the decision and, and Which political ask, party is ask that? for reasons. I don't like to politicize. I'm not a politician, so I don't like these politicizing, are facts, politicizing uh, uh, things. Ms. Patoy, so I'm, I'm, going so to, I'm going to leave it at that. Can we venture a guess? Can we, can we ask which party it is? Is it the EFF? Is it the African National Congress? Is it the African Transformation uh, uh, you know, Party? Which party is taking your decision uh, to not prosecute uh, Ivan Pele on review? Well, it's the three of them, Van Rensburg, Van Lochenberg, and, and, and Ivan yes. Pele. Um, but which party is opposing your decision? Or I can see you review? pushing me. Yes, uh, that's your answer. job. <laughs> that's your job, yes, I agree. And, and I'm going to resist it. I'm really going to resist it because I do not want to politicize uh, my decisions. It will become public at mm. some point. And, uh, but the point I wanted to make is that these decisions, the reasons why these decisions were both overturned mm. is because there was... In the view of panels that were appointed to look into this, which, and, and with which views I agreed, there was 
absolutely no reasonable prospect of a successful mm. prosecution. So are you confident that despite the fact that these parties are taking your decisions on review or party, that your decision to not proceed with the prosecution will be upheld in a court of law? Absolutely. I'm actually glad that this matter is being taken in review. It will allow this matter to be aired in public and for the public to properly understand what the reasons were for the decision that I've taken, which I've not made public. But if I'm compelled to, I will do that. And I think that would be fantastic mm. because it will really allow the public... It will undergird the, your decision. Exactly. Mm. So I am actually, I'm quite pleased this matter has been taken on review in a sense. So let's deal with it in the public and let the process uh, take its course and the public will understand properly you know, what went on and, and why the decision was taken. Now, one of the things that you said uh, when we just uh, started our conversation was that uh, things were quite broken uh, when both Advocate Cronier came in and when you came in. Have you received resistance from NPA staff uh, to attempts to actually become more efficient, to root out corruption within the organization? You know, you don't get overt resistance. Um, but I think there are underlying issues that still need to be dealt with. And I'm going to be quite candid. It's, it's almost on a daily basis there are revelations that are being made that, that it's difficult when you talk about your own staff now because I'm trying to rebuild an institution. To, well, I shouldn't say I because there's nothing I can do on my own. We as a team, as yes. people that are here to fight the good fight, even within the NPA, are trying to rebuild. So it's really difficult to speak about an organization that you run um, when you're trying to rebuild, but also talking about the, the negatives that are within there. Mm. Um, but it is a reality that, you know, the NPA was not immune from, from capture. The NPA is not immune from corruption. And so uh, there are there are some serious allegations that are coming to fore um, that will require me to to proceed quite. Um, and, I, and I'm being cautious because I don't want to um, reveal more than I should in a public forum because there are processes that need yeah. to be followed. Advocate Batoy, I am completely with you. I understand this delicate dance that you have to do. You have to, on the one hand tell the public that you are proceeding, but on the other hand, act in such a way that nobody feels don't unfairly. Compromise, don't compromise. Don't compromise. Exactly. So hold that thought. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, more with Shamila Batoy.